This video will go over how to use Circuit Builder. Using Circuit Builder is the easy part. It's customizing it that's a little bit more difficult than we'll cover in separate videos. So to use Circuit Builder, I already have my ladder pre-inserted here. I'm going to go ahead and select Circuit Builder. Don't worry if your dialog looks different when you use this. I just have expanded the History button which uh, shows this area here. And Circuit Builder comes with some standard circuits already predefined. Got some motor circuits, some power feed, single and three phase, and then we have one line motor circuits and one line power feed. I'm going to go ahead and select a three phase motor circuit. And if I want to just insert it with all the defaults that are defined in there, this is the only selection I need to make, and then I can insert it. And I select where I want it to start. Now what it's showing here is the drawing template that controls how this circuit is inserted and it controls the choices if you go to, if you went to configure it. So it's building it dynamically, it's adjusting to your rung spacing, the ladder spacing, and you can see uh, based on the defaults we got our fuse disconnect switch, regular disconnect switch to the motor, some square terminals, transformer with control circuit. So these are the defaults that are defined in there. Now let's insert another circuit. This time instead of just inserting it with all the defaults, I'm going to configure it. And now I'm in the configuring. Now all the choices here on the left, the circuit elements, this comes from the drawing template. And as more items are inserted, it can add more items on this uh, side for the circuit elements. For example, when the control circuit is inserted, then there'll be more elements that come in with that drawing template and more choices that we would have to make. So for the motor setup, I'm going to go into the uh, setup. I select what type of motor I want, my voltage, frequency, and what horsepower I want for that motor, speed. Etc. All that's determined by the database, which we aren't going to go into in this video. We get all the information that came with that particular motor we selected, and we get the sizing of the wires, the motor leads. It took the motor size and the full load amps and all the information it had, and based on that, gave a recommendation on the wire sizing. The ones in red, too small for that particular motor, so it's not recommending those. We could change the type of wire that would change the recommendation. We can change the run distance or we can have that not even be part of the calculation. There's quite a few options on here. Probably take a separate video on its own just to go over all this. This is all based on the database and can be edited and customized for your particular use. For our motor symbol, so we can step through each one of these. We don't have to do it in order. If we don't select an option and we insert it, then we'll just get whatever the default is. So we can select if we want a motor, do we want our ground wire connection shown, what type of main disconnecting means we would like, do we want the control transformer and control circuit, power factor correction. Now at any time we can go ahead and insert just one circuit element or we can insert right up to the spot that we're at, which is what I'm going to do here. So it inserted the elements that I had selected up to the power factor correction. With the control circuit that came in, we have more circuit elements. So it expands there and we see these ones with the question marks, which I haven't made a choice yet. And again, we don't have to make a choice. If we don't make a choice, we'll get whatever the default is. At any time, we can insert all the circuit elements with this button right here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the rest, and it's building dynamically. Now no more circuit elements to choose, and we're done. And since we selected our horsepower, we get some things automatically sized based on the database. We get the disconnect switch, the main disconnect means with the fuses sized. This is our history. It's keeping track of all the circuits we've inserted. I'm going to go ahead and select the 75 horsepower one that we just did. I can insert exactly the same now if I wanted to, or I could go ahead and configure it. 
It's just kind of a time saver so that if you use certain circuits a lot, you don't have to go through and select each element over and over. This video was a first in a series. I will also cover understanding the spreadsheet, modifying circuit defaults, understanding the circuit template drawings, and adding a new circuit.